called the blood of the covenant. The blood of the covenant. And covenant is a very serious word in the Bible. And covenant is something that God does not take lightly. A man takes covenant very lightly nowadays. Um, people get into covenant and people break covenant. Amen. The, I mean, the courts are full of breach of covenant. Amen. Breach of terms. You have lawyers who go to school just studying how to deal with that situation. Amen. So many, many terms are broken. In fact, you are going to buy something, they will tell you, oh, do you need some insurance on this thing, some warranty? You say, sure. What will it do? Oh, when you drop it, we'll pay for it. You come to the store, we'll give it to you. So, well, you don't intentionally break it, and I hope you don't, but something happens and, and it falls. So you take it back, and then you realize that there are a lot of hoops to jump to. Uh, so they throw so many different things that you even get exasperated and they say, forget it. You understand this? This honesty is now what is, what, what is going on. Every month you pay your insurance. But when you have an accident, oh Lord, unless you need a lawyer in some cases, amen? Some of the insurance guys, they are, they are now beginning to realize that they are losing people because of that, so they are becoming more honest in their dealings. I mean, the point of the matter is that these terms, covenants and, and agreements and things, are not as strong or binding as they used to. God knows this, your word, when you said something, that was it. Amen. In those days, when you spoke something, when you said something, you were as good as your word. When you failed, then that means that your weight as a person had been lowered. Amen? Amen. And then, when you look at the Bible, in the beginning of days, man messed up. We all know that. Adam and Eve, they ate the fruit, got driven out of the garden, fellowship was broken. God attempted to address that issue by releasing the blood, right, to cover them. Something had to die. An animal died so that they wouldn't have to die immediately. And then from that time on, the fellowship between God and man was broken. And the devil took advantage of that situation and began to execute his will and his purposes. The only way God could actually come in after that situation to solve problems on the earth was to find somebody on the earth who would agree with him and come into a covenant with him. And then he will choose that person do whatever he wants to do on the, on the earth. You understand this? But God has a rule, a principle. He says that the heaven, all the heavens belong to God, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. That is the rule that God gave. So even when the men say we are going to build um, a temple or a building, a tower, that will go all the way up into heaven. God realized that if he didn't do something, man will succeed. He says, once they have agreed to do this, nothing can stop them. Wow. That means that man was very, very powerful. You understand this? So he had to come down and mess things up. So eventually, God had to destroy the whole world. We know that. And the first person he entered into covenant with was the person who was perfect in his generations. A guy called Noah. He says, I'm going to destroy the whole earth. But I'm entering and I'm going to establish a covenant with you. Because of the way you are. Because you fear me, me and you, we are cool. And through you, I will bless the rest of this world. They went into the ark. And you know the story. They came out of the ark when the water subsided. When what is dead. Except for Noah and his family. And the Bible says that Noah began to sacrifice some clean animals to the Lord. And with that, God was so satisfied with that sacrifice. He said, I will enter into covenant with you. And he said that because of this covenant, the waters will no longer destroy all of man. He didn't say it will never happen. He said that it will not destroy every person. You understand this? So that there can be floods and people die in floods, but not the whole earth. He says if the waters are threatening to take over the whole earth, there will be a rainbow. It will be a token of my agreement. God's signature is the what? Rainbow. So a sign is a divine signature. Amen. Say a sign is the signature of God. Attesting to the authenticity of his words. So when he says something, there must be a sign. So when Isaiah told Hezekiah that he will rise again from the bed in three days, 
Hezekiah said, how will I know this? Isaiah said, okay, what do you want? You want the sun to go back 10 degrees or go forward 10 degrees? He said, I want it to go back 10 degrees. It went back 10 degrees. That was God's signature. He signed off on that agreement that indeed you will come off your bed in three days. So the first covenant had a token or something to represent it, that being the rainbow. Amen. A man on the side had to do some sacrifices. You see this? So the sacrifice they did, and the God also put it. You know the bow. How many of you have seen the, the rainbow before? That one is totally glory. If you want to believe, if you don't believe in God coming out, you must at least believe in the rainbow. <laughs> that is all God. And you see that there will be a mighty storm. But when the bow comes, no matter how strong the storm is, it has to subside. Yeah. Amen. Well, generations went on by, and then God saw another man called Abraham. Said, I like this guy. I'm going to make a covenant with him. So he called him out. Said, come, go to a land that I'll show you. The guy believes God. He just gets up and just starts moving. Comes to Canaan land. God is so impressed. He says, I'll bless you. I'll do this for you. I'll do that for you. There was a famine guy went out of bed. Finally came back. 15, Genesis 15. God comes to him and says, let's make an agreement. Let's agree. He says, when I make this agreement with you, you can now inherit the land. So when you, when you enter into covenant, you come into inheritance. When you enter into covenant, you come into protection. Are you in this way? When you come into covenant, you are making an agreement with another person. Say covenant. A covenant is usually made between a higher person and a lower person. And usually blood has to flow. And the blood had to be the blood of animals or something else. Amen. In many tribes, if they want to come into some kind of a, a, an alliance, the chiefs can come together and, and they will cut. They will make a little incision on their hands. And then they will let the blood come out and drop into wine. They will mix it together. And then they will both drink it. That means that your blood is not in my blood. My blood is now in your blood. So now we are blood brothers. And now we are together. When you are in trouble, I have to come and help you. When you are in trouble, I have to come and help you. That is what we call covenant. At times they will put something on that, like gunpowder or something. And then it becomes a mark. And that is a sign for everybody to see that this is a covenant. You see this? At times the, the, the chiefs will, will, will take one of their people, maybe their son. And this king will use his son, and the two of them will make the agreement on their behalf. You understand this? And when that happened, whatever the other tribe has becomes the other person's. Are you getting it? Whatever this tribe has becomes theirs. Same thing like marriage. When you marry, you come into a blood covenant. The strongest covenant that there is is a blood covenant. Can I hear a big amen? amen? And after that covenant, what happens is that what I have is yours. And what you have becomes mine. Of course, things have changed. We have prenups and all kinds of stuff nowadays. Now that is man's attempt at having a comfortable marriage. I hear there's something called, I can't remember it, a nice way to break up. There was this lady who broke, who broke up with this man and said it's a comfortable breakup. Something I've forgotten the way. Decoupling. It's called a decoupling. I was like, wow. And they are talking about this and they are fascinated. But they forget that God says, I don't like divorce. I don't like the solution of marriage. You, have, you understand this? Covenant is very important to God. Are you getting this? So when people get married, or when they come into covenant, what you have becomes mine. What I have becomes yours. You understand this? So when God went into covenant with Abraham, he said, I will give this land to your seed. After covenant, you get into inheritance. It may say covenant, inheritance. Covenant, protection. Hallelujah. And then later on in Genesis 17, let's look at Genesis 17, verse 1 and 2. God came to Abraham again and said, Walk thou before me and be thou perfect. There are demands of the covenant. That's why Jesus said, if you love me, you will do my word, right? 
You obey my commandments. Coming into covenant, there are some demands and conditions. He says, walk before me and be thou perfect. Verse 2. Why should Abraham be perfect? Verse 2. I will make my covenant between me and thee. And I will multiply thee. So when you come into covenant, God has to multiply you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you come into covenant, you come into inheritance. God says he will not allow the flood to take you out. He says even the animals will be in, in, in dread of you. That's no one. He said that you will be fruitful. He began to bless you with the seasons. There are so many blessings of the covenant. Today we are not going into that very deeply. Amen. But just, just suffice it to say that when you enter into covenant, you become productive in life. You become fruitful in life. Are you not seeing this? It says, I will multiply thee exceedingly. Let's continue reading. Hallelujah. Abraham fell on his face. God spoke with him saying, verse 4, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. So because Abraham was going to live according to God's plans and purposes, he was going to be an emperor. Say emperor. emperor. And he was going to be in charge of all the nations. A father of many nations. All the nations, you are going to be in charge of them. Are you hearing this way? So when you come into a covenant, you come into headship. You come into rulership. Are you getting this? Without the covenant, Abraham was just another nice guy. And when he went into covenant, he became productive. And immediately God says, something will have to happen. Verse 5. Neither shall your name be called anymore Abraham, but thy name shall be called Abraham. See, when you come into covenant, even your identity changes. Yeah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You become a person who can affect many generations. And then verse 6 says something. Verse 6. I will make thee not just fruitful. Adam was to be fruitful, but Abraham was to be exceedingly fruitful and I will make nations of thee, kings shall come of thee. When you enter into covenant, all these blessings begin to manifest in your life. So when the disciples went into covenant with Jesus Christ, what happened? Jesus said in Luke 22 verse 28, ye are they who have continued with me in my afflictions and temptations. And now I'm going to appoint for you a kingdom. Just as my father appointed for you a kingdom. You understand this? So covenant brings you into headship. Covenant brings you to what? Headship. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Headship. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So as soon as Abraham entered into covenant, God says, my covenant is with thee. My agreement is not with Nahor. My agreement is not with Milka, your other brothers. My agreement is not with Nimrod. My agreement is with you. Abraham. That's why Jesus Christ said that this is the camp of the new covenant. Right? What they shed for me, for the remission of sins. So you can be perfect with me and enter into all these blessings. Are you getting it? Covenant is very, very, very important. God doesn't joke with that. Amen? God doesn't joke with covenant. So go enter into covenant with Noah. He entered into covenant with Abraham. And according to the book of Galatians, that covenant wasn't broken. Even though he entered into covenant with Moses. The Moses covenant was just to, you know, cover things until the real covenant was ratified. But God says that this covenant is between me and you. So what is, uh, what is God going to offer? He also has to offer his side. Amen. He said, Okay, Abraham, you do the circumcision thing. And then he had to prove the worthiness of man to be in covenant with him, God. So in chapter 21, God at 22, Jesus comes to God comes to Abraham and says, Give me your son. Now, when you're in covenant with somebody, whatever you have it becomes the other person's. And you can make a demand on it whenever you have need of it. You understand this? Abraham understands covenant. In those days, I keep saying, in those days, covenants were very, very important. You didn't just break covenants. So Abraham says, oh, you want my son? Okay, Isaac, let's go. 
Early that morning, he obeys. You don't see three days of him arguing God as a film show. He just goes. According to Hebrews, he had faith that since God said that through Isaac will my covenant be established, that God will raise up Isaac if he killed him. He had that faith. That's some serious faith. He was about to kill him. And God says, ah, Abraham, don't do it. By this I have seen that you are a person that I can work with. And because you have done this by myself, I have sworn. Blessing, I will bless thee. Multiplying, I will multiply thee. I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, as the sun on the seashore, and in thy, thy seed shall possess the gate of their enemies. The Bible says that your seed shall be a blessing to many nations. Are you getting it? But he said, by myself, I have sworn. I don't need Isaac. I have my own Isaac. That is why Isaiah 53 says, we consider him stricken, smitten of God. Hallelujah. Smitten of who? God. Jesus was God's lamb. Amen. Amen. Jesus was God's side of the agreement. He says, by myself, I have sworn. That means he himself was going to stand behind this. That's why Jesus said, I am a father, I want one. Though he was equal with God, he didn't count equality with God something to fight over. In Psalm 110, David saw Jesus sitting at the right hand of God. Amen. As equals. Are you getting it? And Jesus came representing the Father. He said to Thomas, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So when he hung on the cross, that was God's surety. God's guarantee that this covenant will never fail. And this was the Abrahamic covenant that Jesus ratified. Are you getting this word? Let's go to Galatians 3 verse 17. Hallelujah. Galatians 3 verse 17. Shout covenant. Covenant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at verse 17. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ the law, which was how many years later? 430 years after, cannot this annul that it should make the promise of none effect. Are you all seeing this? So he's saying that the, the covenant that Jesus was talking about is the covenant that God entered into with Abraham. But at that point, it was a promissory note. But now, the covenant was fully consummated. When Jesus Christ died on the cross. Are you getting this? Yes. So when he said this cup is a new covenant in my blood. So the shedding of his blood wasn't just to wipe away our sins. It was also to show us that we are coming into a covenant. Say I'm in covenant with God. Shout blood of the covenant. Amen. So the blood of Jesus is not just to redeem us. It is not just to sanctify us. It is also to demonstrate our covenantal relationship that we have with God. And when they sat around that table and they broke the bread and Jesus took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant. He was saying that we are entering into an agreement. You and I, we are co-equals. We are coming into a union that cannot be broken. Whatever I'm going to go through, you are going to be doing it with me. Are you getting it? Yeah. When you come into covenant with God, you come into right standing. What is right standing? Righteousness. The blessing of covenant is that you are now in right standing with God. In the kingdom of heaven, everybody sees you as a credit worthy person. Yeah. Hallelujah. So Abraham, even angels assisted him. Whenever something was going to happen to Sodom and Gomorrah, God had to first come to his covenant. Partner on the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. And then when you come into covenant, you become one. Say covenant, covenant. makes me one, makes me one. with the person I'm covenanting with. So when you come into covenant, you become one with the person. So when Jesus said that this cup is my covenant, drink ye all of it. Amen. This is my blood. That blood is coming into you. When we jump the bloodline, that's another way. 
of, of initiating this covenantal relationship we have with God. His bloodline becomes our bloodline. Amen. So the genetic anomalies we inherited in our bloodlines are completely wiped out as we receive the superimposition of God's blood upon our life. Are you getting this word? Hallelujah. This is wonderful. I don't know whether you are getting it. But the covenant when you come into you become what? One. With our Lord Jesus Christ. So when you go to Romans, it says that we were crucified together with him. Because whatever he did, we were doing it with him by covenant. So when he hung on the cross, we're hanging there with him. When he died, we died together with him. When he was buried, we were buried together with him. When he was resurrected, we were quickened together with him. We were exalted together with him. Because of what? Covenant. Shall covenant. 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 He says the law, which was 430 years later, could not break it. The Mosaic covenant was a covenant he made with Israel. And it wasn't too long before they broke that. So Jeremiah says that God will put in place another covenant. Amen. But that was really going back to the covenant he made with Abraham. That hadn't been consummated yet. But now in Jesus Christ, it has been consummated. Let's look at Hebrews 7, verse 22. Hallelujah. Say, I am in covenant with Jehovah God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But I would say, by so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. Testament is the same word used for covenant. Are you hearing this? Covenant means to cut something and to blood flows. Are you getting it? It is an agreement. It is also a will. The last living testament of Jesus is what happened in the last supper. Jesus has been made the guarantee or the surety of a better covenant. In Hebrews 7, Paul was comparing the old covenant with the new covenant. In the new covenant, the Bible says in Hebrews 8 verse 6 that it is better. Amen. Amen. It has a better mediator and it has better promises. Hebrews 8 verse 6. So Jesus is made a surety of a better covenant or a better testament. That means he's a guarantee. So in Christ Jesus, all the promises are made yes and amen. amen. Alright. Can we read this? But now had he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises but as I said the Old Testament covenant has some powerful promises it says with this promise blessed are you in the city blessed are you in the field you are blessed when you go out you are blessed when you come in it says your bread will always be there he talks about the basket being blessed the storehouse being blessed he said that because of the blessing upon you the rain will fall on your land he says to be fruitful in your body. Everything you have will be fruitful. And to become the head of the nations. He said you'll be the head. And not until again, I tell you, the covenant brings you into headship. Amen. Amen. You'll be above and not beneath. Amen. But that covenant has some curses connected to it. Mm-hmm. And when they broke it, no curses also came into force. Amen. Amen. And they were removed from their land. But in our covenant, who becomes the curse? Jesus is the curse. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? So our covenant is better. Amen. In the old covenant, for eight years, I mean for three years, they didn't have to plant anything. In the year of Jubilee, he says that don't plant anything. I will make sure that the food in your storehouse will never run out. Can you imagine that? That was old covenant. In the old covenant, they could have food in the wilderness to eat. In the old covenant, they had water to drink. Amen. How much more our covenant? If that was a great covenant, what about the covenant we have? The Bible says it is better. Better promises. Say better promises. So whatever they have, we have it more. So when Jesus came, he came to preach the year of the, I mean the acceptable year of the Lord, the jubilee of the Lord. His is a permanent jubilee. 
There's no time limitation on the Jubilee of God. The promises of God says, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. Amen. If we can believe this, what can God do for us? The stress will go away. The anxiety will have to go away. Are you hearing this word? Amen. Now let's go to Hebrews 10, verse 29. Say, blood of the covenant. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have entered into covenant with Jehovah God himself. Amen. And now whatever he has belongs to you. That is why God says that you are an heir of God and a joint heir with the Lord Jesus Christ. So covenant is a major, major issue. So when he died on the cross, he was executing the covenant. The Abrahamic covenant was consummated on the cross. And now we are agents of the covenant. Amen? Amen. The Bible says, of how much your punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the Son of God and has counted the what? You see this? The blood of the covenant. Wherewith he was sanctified and holy thing and none despite it. So there is such a thing as the blood of the covenant. And when Jesus died on the cross, he shed his blood. And when he shed his blood for me and you, we came into covenant with God. And look at how the covenant blessed Abraham. And how he blessed Isaac. The Bible says, even when Israel was in Egypt and they were being afflicted, God heard their cry because of the covenant. There were other nations that were being oppressed. God didn't do anything about that. But when his people were being oppressed, he remembered the covenant he made with Abraham and ran to their help. So today when you are in trouble and you cry to God, Hallelujah. amen. He said, have respect unto the covenant for the dark places of the earth are the hounds of cruelty. But listen, when you cry on the covenant, go run to your aid. For the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the sake of the Lord Jesus, when you cry, he will come to your help. We have to stand on the covenant. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hebrews 13, verse 20. Say, I am in covenant with Jehovah God. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of the everlasting covenant. Oh, hallelujah. I want us all to read this particular verse. Can we stand to our feet and read this particular verse, please? Are you ready? Yes. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Hallelujah. We can please say it. Amen. So we see that it's not just the blood of the covenant. The covenant has no time limitation. It has no expiry notice. Are you getting it? There's no expiration on the blood of the covenant. The blood of the covenant is what? Eternal. The blood of the goats and bulls expires. But the blood of Jesus Christ never expires. We say the blood never loses its power. So that covenant that Peter, James, and John could depend on and rely on, you can rely on that. Amen. When Peter was caught up in prison, the covenant began to work for him. When the apostles were put in prison, the angels of the covenant came to their help. When you are in trouble, the covenant relationship you have to God will bring help to you. Amen. When Paul and Silas were in prison, as they began to sing and praise God and pray, the covenant came into manifestation. God stepped down and rescued his people. The blood of the covenant is very critical for us today. When Jesus died, we died with him. Amen. Let's go to Romans chapter 6. I want you to understand that when you enter into covenant with God, you become one with him. And whatever Jesus went through, you actually went through it with him. You didn't have to die like he died. But when he died, Eventually, you died with him because of the covenant that you have with him. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Romans 6. Are we all there? Mm -hmm. Verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him. 
by baptism unto death. That as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Are uh, you are hearing this? Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. So when you enter into covenant, whatever he went through, you benefit from it. So if he died, we died with him. When he was buried, our sins, the enmity was buried with him. When he was quickened, the Bible said the same spirit, in the spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead, dwell in you, then he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body. So if Jesus' body, which was weak, and died because he took on sin into his body, but the Bible says he was quickened, and he rose from the dead, then when the enemy hits you, when the enemy gives you a knockout blow, when sickness afflicts you, when a demonic attack comes upon your life, the Bible says you tear this temple down in three days I'll build it back up again. Whatever Jesus went through, you can go through it. You can always bounce back from any damage done to your life because of the covenant. Because of the covenant. God will make sure that whatever happens to you, he can reverse it. God can restore. God can recover because of the covenant you have with the Lord Jesus Christ. We are buried together with him. We are crucified together with him. The Bible says that even in the Old Testament, when those old saints looked at the brazen serpent, what happened to them? They got healed. You see what the covenant does for you? Just looking at it. Today, as we are looking at these verses, we are getting healed. Amen. As we are looking at this thing, something is happening. Amen. You see, um, in the spiritual realm, what you see is what you are. She just said, I can't do anything. I said, what I see, my father do. So even the animals that stood in front of those branches that Jacob put there, they, their offspring became the same way. What you look at, what you visualize, you become. Amen. As you are contemplating the blood of the covenant, the governmental agreement we have comes into force. Amen. Amen. You can be somebody who has received a major inheritance and be totally unaware that that auntie will die. You may not even be aware that your auntie is dead. But one day somebody calls you. Are you Mr. Thompson? Yes. What do you want? At times you may think it's a bill collector. <laughs> what do you want? The guy says, oh, don't worry about it. Um, we have been looking for you for a whole year. We need you to come to our offices. So you are scared. I mean, why should I come to your office? He says, don't worry, we will send you the ticket. Oh, you send me the ticket. What is going on? Oh, um, your auntie died. Oh, she died? I didn't know this. Well, she's been there for a year. And um, there are, she left $10 million for you. At that point, somebody has collapsed. The other person, are you there? Are, are you there? Are you there? <laughs> so, Somehow he's revived. He says, Could you see that again? He says, It's calm. Are you trying to trick me? He says, No, you do have $10 million. We've been looking for you for a whole year. That money is in the trust fund, and since one year has passed by, $2 million has come upon it. So really, it's $12 million. Wow. He says, Where is the ticket coming down? Don't worry about it, I'll come myself. <laughs> Somebody is happy when I say that. Hallelujah. What am I saying? As you are looking in the word, we are discovering what belongs to us. When Jesus died, there were so many blessings we got. So many blessings came into our life. Amen. We got the blessing of protection. He says, you know what? I will make sure that when I see that sign, that that water will not mess you up. He says, when the enemy comes to you like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard. You see this? So when the enemy comes with water, 
as, as the enemy released water against that woman, we saw that yesterday. What happened? The earth mm, and swallowed the water. Whatever the enemy says against you, that's why he uses water spirits a lot. But when the water spirits come against you, shoo, the earth will open up for you because of the blood of the covenant. Because of the blood of the covenant, I will build every water spirit, every foul water spirit, tormenting, afflicting, harassing. The saints of the living God are bind you and I cast you out of their life, out of their marriage, out of their finances, out of their life. Go with every breath in the name of Jesus. Amen. By the blood of Jesus, we become head. We become the firstborn. We get the right of the primogeniture. We are the head and not the tail. And that's why Isaiah 6 1 says that we shall possess the double. When you are a firstborn, you possess what? Double. So the blood of the covenant gives you the right to double. Are you getting it? When, when you receive this covenant, you enter into inheritance. You inherit everything that Jesus did and more. And you may say, I'm a joint heir with the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what happened when you die with the Lord Jesus. Now let's go finally, let's go to Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Oh, what a glorious, glorious, glorious thing that Jesus did for us. Verse 20. Because of the covenant, Paul could say this. He says that I am crucified with Christ. You nevertheless are live. So if you are dead, how, how is it that you are living? How is it that you are making it from day to day? He says the life. He says yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh. I live not even by my own faith. He says that I migrated from my own faith. To the faith that Jesus Christ walked in. That is why Paul could make many nations obedient to the gospel. By word and deed. Because he wasn't just operating by himself, it was Jesus in Paul. So when you understand what happened when Jesus died on the cross, the Father, you are crucified with him. When you come into that reality, the life that Jesus lives now begins to manifest through you. And the interesting thing is this Jesus is living now at the right hand of God. He has access to so much more glory than he did when he was on the face of the earth. He has access to everything. All authority in heaven, all authority on the earth has been given to him. So our covenant has so much more power than that of Abraham, than that of the other saints. They couldn't walk in this kind of um, wealth that we are walking in. The glory we have available and accessible, they didn't have it. But we have it. Amen. 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 Isn't covenant a powerful thing? Amen. Amen. So people are very careful who they marry. Amen. So uh, when men are going to marry, they put their best foot forward. If they don't have a car, they will have a car somehow. Amen. And when the mother of the daughter sees the car, that settles it. That settles it. When the man is angry, he says, oh, that man, his nose is crooked. He says, ah, didn't you see the car? Did you see the car? What is the problem? Yeah. And the man has already blessed her with some clothes and whatever else. Amen. And then later the you get into the mess like, ah! oh my God. You realize that this man wasn't what he said he was. You have a lot of debts. Automatically, your clean credit has been destroyed. God is not like that. God is not a man that he should lie. The son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said it? And will he not do it? Man can forsake you. Man can fail you. God will never fail you. Because that the blood of the everlasting covenant. This agreement can, cannot be dissolved. Because he made this agreement with his own son, Jesus Christ. And if you can believe this, everything Jesus has, you have. Whatever he is, you are. Say, I inherit together with Jesus Christ. I'm a joint heir with the Lord Jesus Christ. What he inherits, I inherit. I am crucified together with Jesus. 
I am buried together with Jesus. I am quickened together with Jesus. I am raised up together with Jesus. And I'm seated together with the Lord Jesus Christ at the right hand of God. And I rule and reign with Him. Hallelujah. This is the blood of the covenant. And this is also a marital covenant. When we enter into this covenant, we are one with Him in spirit. He has given access to our body. Hallelujah. He can walk in us. He can talk through us. He can see through our eyes. Hallelujah. Because we are one with him. When we touch people, it is Jesus Christ touching people. When we speak, it is him speaking. The last year, I have, I have noticed something very strange. I have been talking to people without thinking. <laughs> it's still this powerful. I am not thinking about what to say, but the words are just coming out. And I'm just listening to myself like, wow. Wow. I can't say that. How could I have said that? Jesus will begin to talk to you. He'll begin to think to you. will have the mind of Christ. Colossians 2.16 says that we have the mind of Christ. The way he thinks is the way you think because you are in covenant with him. Amen. And because his body was crucified in your place and he received a much better body that could go through walls. Hallelujah. A body that could disappear and appear. A body that could ascend into heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. We have that same kind of body available. Amen. 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 We have access to this anointing. So when the sickness hits you, call on the covenants. Say, God, please, your covenants. Even the healing is a covenant. If you read Exodus 15, it was a covenant that he made with Israel. Through Jesus Christ, he's making a covenant that your mind is the same thing like Jesus Christ. That your physical body is like his. You are in covenant with Jesus, you can have his body. Let's move finally. <laughs> Philippians 3 21. <laughs> but you know, my finalists are not really finalists. Um, they are a winding down. You know, that's, that's how I describe my finalists. But it helps me to wind down. If I don't say finally, we'll be going on. Hallelujah. Uh, Philippians 3. Oh, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Don't you love the word of God? Amen. Philippians 3 verse 20. For our conversation is where? In yeah. heaven. Are you not in covenant with God? Yeah. Where he is, that's where your position. Yeah. Amen. Our conversation, our behavior, our whatever we do on the earth is where? In heaven. You're actually not on the earth. <laughs> you are actually in heaven. Yeah. Amen. We'll see that amplified soon. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile, corrupted, decaying, immortal body, that it may be fashioned like unto what? His glorious body, according to the work and whereby he is able even to subdue high blood pressure. He's able to subdue diabetes. He's able to subdue migraines. He's able to subdue fatigue, tiredness. Even when we are weak, he's able to give us strength because we are one with him. This is a wonderful promise. Because of the agreement we've entered into, he said, This bread is my body, which is broken for you. Eat it. The Bible says in John 5 56 that when you eat it, what happens? John 5, verse 56. Now that is the very final verse. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I can put an exclamation mark on that. Doc is like, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't believe me. Okay. Hallelujah. It's well, isn't it? It's well. No, John 6, sorry. John chapter 6, rather. Verse 56. He says, He that eateth my flesh 
and drinketh my blood dwells in me and I in him. So when we enter into this covenant, we are married. We are one with him. And whatever Jesus is, you are. That's why John says, as he is, so are we in this world. That's first John 2, 6. As he is, so are we in this world. And what is he like? He's Melchizedek. He's our high priest. He's a king of kings. So we are also having that imperial anointing. He's a prince of peace, so we have peace automatic. He is immortal, so we have immortality powers. If it's not time to die, nobody can kill us. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We can walk through bullets. Amen. As he is, so are you. Amen. If you can believe it, it's yours. You. We walk into everything that Jesus has to offer by faith. Amen. Without faith, you can't have it. Amen. Faith is a substance of things. Say things. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Amen. As you believe, you begin to have and acquire and possess and inherit. Amen. Amen. Do you believe this way? Amen. Say, I am in covenant am with Jehovah God. Jehovah God. Jesus Christ Jesus. is a mediator, the guarantee, the surety of this agreement. Glory be to God. Back to Philippians 3.21. Philippians 3.21. Now, I have actually closed my Bible. So don't worry about it. Philippians 3.21. Put the amplified version. I want us to look at verse 20. The amplifier. Do we have it? 20, verse uh, uh, 3, verse 20. And let's see if we can put the amplifier. We are citizens of the state, the commonwealth, the homeland, which is where? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let me ask you a question. The American citizenship, which everybody covets, and the citizenship in heaven, which is of more worth? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If someone is messing you up, where's your passport? Are you a citizen? You tell them, man, I'm the biggest, fattest. I have the best citizenship you can ever think about. Amen. What is this American citizenship? What are you talking about? Amen. I'm a citizen of heaven. Amen. Glory be to God in this place. Don't let anybody put you down. Amen. You are a citizen of where? And from it also, we earnestly and patiently await the coming of Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, our Savior, verse 21, who will transform and fashion anew the body of our humiliation to conform to it and be like the body of his glory <laughs> and majesty by accepting the power which enables him to subject everything. So when we say that, the DNA of Jesus be superimposed. That means may it subdue whatever erroneous DNA is, is resident in your life. Or we say we have received the prophetic bloodline of Jesus. That means that the image of God and the likeness of God should be superimposed on us. And any part of our life that is out of alignment with the image and the likeness of God as the exact representation of his being, Jesus, Yeshua, our Lord and Savior, as it comes upon us, we conform. We are aligned. How many of you know real alignment? Yes, sir. If you don't have real alignment, your tires begin to mess up. Amen. And then your car is not correctly stable, right? After a real alignment, if you feel better, the car just runs better. Amen. When, when, when the DNA and blood of Jesus is superimposed upon you, you come into alignment. Yeah. Because of the covenant we have. But as we have had the covenant, we have eaten the bread, his body. We have drunk his blood. Let's jump the bloodline now. Yeah. Hallelujah.